welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. Today we're gonna convert some linear equations. This time from slope intercept to standard form. So we're kind of going in the opposite direction a little bit. So how do we convert an equation, a linear equation from slope intercept to standard form? Well, as you can see, slope intercept, we kind of have y isolated. It's y equals, y it's by itself on one side of the equal side, right? With standard form, we have x and y on the same side of the equation. So a good place to start, a good first step, would be to simply move the x. Like, look at this example. We can move this x over by subtracting both sides by 2 thirds x. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Minus 2 thirds x to both sides. Minus 2 thirds x. And I'm left with what? Negative 2 thirds x plus y on the left-hand side. Negative 2 over 3x plus y equals... These cancel and I'm just left with seven. So now I'm very close. There's just one thing that we have to note about standard form and that's that A, B, and C are all integers, meaning there can't be fractions or decimals or anything like that. And look, I have a fraction here. So I have one more step and that's to get rid of this fraction. How can I do that? By multiplying both sides by three. By multiplying both sides basically by the least common denominator, which in this case is 30. So what it, well, let's see what happens, how it gets rid of this denominator. Multiply both sides by 3. I have negative 2 over 3x times 3. That's a negative 2x, right? Negative 2x plus 3y equals 7 times 3. That's 21. And now I have converted this linear equation from slope-intercept form to standard form. So what are the steps? If we could break down the steps... First, move that x term over with the y, and then multiply by the least common denominator to clear the fractions. That's it, really just two steps. All right, let's do another example. Same as the last example, I'm moving the x over with the y, and then I'm gonna see what I can multiply both sides by to get rid of the fractions. So first things first, I'll, I'll add plus two over five x to both sides, plus two over five x. That gets rid of this x. Now the x is over here with the y, which is where I want it. 2 fifths x plus y equals 1 third. That 1 third is still over here. Okay, so now I have to get rid of, now I have to get rid of the fractions. So I have 1 third and 2 fifths. And this is why I say multiply both sides by the least common denominator of whatever fractions you have. Because in this case, if I were to add these two fractions, I would have to find a least common denominator, and that would be 15. And that's exactly what I multiply both sides by as well, to get rid of these fractions. Think about it. i got to multiply by 5 to get rid of this. i got to multiply by 3 to get rid of this. So if I multiply both sides by 5 and 3, in other words, 15, 5 times 3, right? Then I get rid of both these. So that's what I'm going to do. Multiply both sides by 15. 15, okay, so now I get 15 times 2 over 5. The 5 goes into the 15 three times, so I'm left with 3 times 2, which is 6x, plus 15y equals 15 times 1 third, so 15 over 3, that's 5. All right, last example, same exact process. Move the x over with the y. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Subtract one half x from both sides. Now what, what do I have? Minus one half x plus y on the left-hand side. Negative one half x plus y equals, let's see, these canceled out, so I got three-fourths left on the right side. So remember why I said least common denominator? That word least is kind of important, and I guess it depends on your professor and how strict they are. But think about it. Remember last time we had 3 and 5, so we multiplied both sides by 3 times 5, which is 15. Now we have 2 and 4. So what if we multiply both sides by 8? That would be unnecessary, right? Because look, these have a common factor of 2. In other words, if I multiply both sides by 4, I can get rid of the 2 and the 4. All I need to use is the 4. And that's why I use the word least common denominator, is think about if you were adding one half plus three fourths. You would just write one half as two fourths, and you would add two fourths plus three fourths, right? So your least common denominator would be four, not eight. 
So that's the same idea you use when you're multiplying both sides by a number to get rid of the fractions, as you think about the least common denominator. Because if you multiplied by eight, what you would get in the end would be correct, but there would be an extra factor of two left over thrown in there. So you basically have to still divide both sides by two if you want it to be in the simplest form. And depending on how strict your professor is, they could take minus one point, or you never know. It's good to, you know, have it in the simplest form. So I can multiply both sides by four. Four, four. So my four times negative one half, that's negative two. I have negative two x plus four y equals three fourths times four, the fours cancel, equals three. All right, I hope this video helped. If it did, hit like, hit subscribe. If you have questions, you can leave those below in the comments. Until next time, keep flexing those brain muscles, keep making those brain gains.